Hello my dear students and welcome to Vocabulary TV. Today I bring you a very important lesson on vocabulary. This lesson introduces one of the most effective approaches through which anyone and everyone can build a good vocabulary. We often find ourselves in a situation where we try to memorize new words and spend a lot of time doing so. But they get flushed out of our memory within a few days. Not anymore. Using mnemonics or memory aids is one approach which can help us learn all these vocabulary words for life. Okay, so how do mnemonics work? Well, mnemonics is a learning technique that improves our memory and helps us recall the meanings of words easily and quickly as and when we need to. And the best part, this approach is very interesting and fun-filled. I'm sure learning vocabulary words won't be a boring task from now on. In this technique of using mnemonics, we learn each word with the help of a clue, which may be a picture, an acronym, a funny phrase, a story, etc. etc. I am sure you will develop a liking for this approach pretty soon. So, without further introduction, let's start with our first word. That word is laconic. It's an adjective. It is a word that describes a quality and to learn it, I am going to tell you a story or you can say an anecdote related to its origin. The word laconic derives from a region in ancient Greece known as Laconia. This region also included the famous city of Sparta and its inhabitants were known to be very brave and disciplined. The Spartans. They used to communicate to the point using very few words. So the story goes like this. There was this King Philip II of Macedonia who is better known as Alexander the Great's father. After capturing other key city-states in Greece, he turned his attention to Sparta and asked threateningly whether he should come as a friend or foe. There came a one-word reply. The reply was neither. Now, seeing such a response, he lost patience and sent the message, you are advised to submit without further delay. For, if I bring my army into your land, I will destroy your farms, slay your people and raise your city. The Spartans again replied with a single word, if. Such was the impact of this exchange of messages that subsequently neither Philip nor his son Alexander the Great attempted to capture Laconia. So. This story relates to the ability of the people of Laconia to communicate efficiently using the fewest words possible. And that exactly is the meaning in which the word laconic is used today. Easy to remember, isn't it? We will do sentence examples for each of the five words in the second half of this lesson. Let us move on to the second word of today's lesson which is caveat. The mnemonic for this word is hidden in the word itself. If you break apart this word, you get cave and eat. It is as if someone is giving you a warning. Beware, don't go near the cave or else the lion in the cave will eat you up. Caveat, cave eat. And that's it. Caveat means a warning or a word of caution. In fact, there is a very popular old saying, caveat amter, which loosely translates as, let the buyer beware. In the 16th century, this phrase was used as a safeguard for the seller. It was an indication for the buyer to examine the item, for instance a horse, before the sale is completed, so that the seller can't be blamed if the item turns out to be unsatisfactory. 
So cave plus eat is caveat. I know it's a funny mnemonic, but that's how the word lasts in the memory. Such funny hints are very effective in learning a new word. Our third word is obsequious. Okay, let's highlight the part of the word that will help you remember it. CQ. This root also comes in the word sequence. Now, what's a sequence? A sequence is a group of numbers where one number follows another according to some pattern. The root CQ means to follow, and so this word obsequious will likely describe someone who is a follower rather than a leader. So, an obsequious person is one who follows another person excessively, sometimes to a sickening degree. Oxford Dictionary gives this meaning as obedient or attentive to an excessive or servile degree. The next word is preen. The hint for this word is in its pronunciation. This word rhymes with queen and remember that queens are always dressed up in all their finery. So, when someone spends effort in dressing up or tidying up their appearance, sometimes by looking at a mirror, we use the verb preen to describe such an act. The word primp is also an exact synonym in this meaning. Not only a person, this word can be used for animals or birds too. According to Oxford Dictionary, the following three are the slightly different but related meanings in which the word is used. When used for a bird, preen means to tidy and clean its feathers with its beak. For a person is the same as we discussed. To devote effort to making oneself look attractive and then admire one's appearance. Preen also means to congratulate or pride oneself, same as patting one's back. So, will you remember the mnemonic now? Preen queen. Preen like a queen. And the last word is ischu. I am going to give you a very funny mnemonic for this word, which you can't ever forget. I don't know if it's a coincidence, but the word rhymes with shoe. When do you say that? When you come across a stray dog on a street and you want to shoo it away, or let's say avoid it, and steer clear of it, because there is a risk that it might bite you. You say shoe, shoe, get away from me. You want to avoid it. So, ischu means to deliberately avoid using or abstain from something. An example would be a fat person eschewing fried foods and sugars to control her weight. Now, we begin with the second part of this lesson in which we will learn some real application skills by finding out the correct choice for the fill in the blank in our example sentences. The five words we have learnt are the options for the blanks. We will also look at synonyms, that is similar meaning, and antonyms, that is opposite meaning of these words. Let me read out the first of these example sentences for us and let us decide the correct word for the blank. Readying herself for a date, Ria dashed before the mirror as she carefully tucked her hair into a French roll. With her shimmery dress, she felt like a fairy tale princess and could not help dash herself on her good looks. Clearly, a verb goes into these two blanks above. So the answers are preened for the first blank and preening for the second blank as she is congratulating herself on her good looks. I have already given you the various definitions for preen, so please go through the synonyms and antonyms list yourself. The synonyms are
Next sentence is the driving instructor gave his students this dash. Never exceed the speed limit. Always keep one foot near the brake so as to quickly press the pedal when required. Clearly, the driving instructor is giving a word of caution. So the correct word is caveat. Other words that carry the same meaning as caveat are warning, caution, admonition, monition, red flag, alarm bells, etc. The third sentence is to impress his girlfriend. He knew that he needed to consciously dash certain habits, especially chewing his fingernails and keeping hair untidy. So what's the answer? He needs to avoid or eschew certain habits such as chewing fingernails. That's another mnemonic for you. Synonyms, escape, avoid, evade, elude, and shun are all synonymous words. And opposite of avoiding something would be to indulge in something. Next sentence is, the actor likes to keep his interview responses terse and to the point. He is clearly the dash type, an intelligent man of few words. The correct choice for this blank is laconic. There are quite a few synonyms of the word laconic that you can make a note of. They are brief, concise, terse, succinct, short, economical, elliptical, crisp, pithy, incisive, compendious. And the words that mean just the opposite are verbose, long-winded, loquacious, circuitous, diffuse, circumlocutory, rambling and prolix. And the last one, the boss often got irritated by his dash junior who used to go to extreme lengths of psychophancy and paid less attention to his work. Correct choice is obsequious. Talking about similar meaning words, there are many synonyms, each of which have a story of their own, which we will reserve for some other mnemonics lesson. For now, let's quickly go through the list. The synonyms are ingratiating, unctuous, psychophantic, fawning, oily, greasy, groveling, cringing, toadyish, subservient, submissive, slavish. An opposite of obsequious person will be a domineering one. That brings us to the end of this lesson. There are so many more such lessons on mnemonics on the cards. For now, you can enjoy going through an extensive list of video lessons on our channel. And if you like the video, please click the subscribe button and share with your friends too. Thanks for your time. See you later.